Scrabble knockoff that was called Words with Friends? No. Ah, uh, maybe. It was oh, was that Facebook. the app? The app thing? It was yeah. on Facebook a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it was like a game. It was like one of those stupid. I don't have friends, so like no. uh, bird games, Angry Birds before Angry Birds. It was Angry Words. I don't think it was like Angry Birds at all. It it's was... not. It's not. Not in similar. I'm saying just how big it was. Like it, it was like a Facebook game at first and whatnot, right? Yeah, but it was weird. Just I just Scrabble. don't know why it was. Yeah, why did you just call it Scrabble? It literally was just Scrabble. <laughs> Probably like licensing reasons or like words. A license friends. to Scrabble. Yeah, <laughs> Mattel. Words. Mattel wouldn't let that. Uh, <laughs> With an <Yeah>. iron fist, <laughs> we here at Mattel. But like, I yeah, I used to cheat in that hardcore man. How do you cheat spelling words? You make up words. But wouldn't people be like looking? Well, I guess if you're playing words with friends, you could look it up. But if you're playing like real legit, I got Scrabble, called out a few times. You can't. You can't just like, like there's no way you found that word because some words were like they're not even words like that you would know. Just be like, yo, like, I was in the spelling bee. There's things you don't know about me. I was a 12 year old spelling bee champion. You know what? I was a 12 year old spelling bee loser. <laughs> See, you, you don't want to play online games with me. I'm a dirty, dirty cheater. Wait, though. What uh, were you were about to say before you said cheater? <laughs> <laughs> and a, and a uh, really hard game to cheat at is chess. Welcome to Historical. My name is David, and as always, I am joined by Jason and Michael. Hello. Hello as well. And we here at Historical, we like to take a funny look at things throughout history, even if the historical events are sometimes depressing. But today, I don't think it will be. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. What is it? Today we will be conversing about Robert Fisher, also known as Bobby. Oh, Bobby. A chess master. Virtuoso, if you would. <laughs> but to really understand Bobby, you need to understand... <laughs> if who, you would. His mother. <laughs> you mean, if you will. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I would? <laughs> if you would. Please. So his mother was Regina Fisher. <laughs> She was born in Switzerland. Her parents were Polish Jews. Oh, Hold on. Well, I definitely called somebody one time when I worked at the video store. Like they oh, like had people a movie. Know you worked at a video store. But like, be, I'm just, it, because I'm calling strangers, like I'm not doing this I, I'd be at home by myself. But I was at my work as a teenager and I didn't know how to pronounce Regina. So I just said Regina. It was on a voicemail too. Like I left a message. I was oh, like, hi, hi Regina. This is Dave. So, hey. The CIA people that are clearly listening to us go through your records, find that phone call, so we can get a clip of David saying Regina <laughs> from 15 years ago. <laughs> I think I might have apologized on the message, too. Oh, no. That's even worse. <laughs> Sorry if I pronounced your name it's wrong. It's like when you call your ex-girlfriend uh, all drunk and like you're like, you got you do. And then you're like, I, just, I didn't really mean anything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Regina. <laughs> I mean, Regina. Whatever your name is. Regina. But this isn't about Regina. <laughs> No, it, it is about Regina for now. Oh. She okay. was raised in St. Louis, Missouri. And after graduating college in her teens, oh. Regina traveled to Germany to visit her brother. Where oh. she, okay, good. <laughs> I thought. Where she met a geneticist and future Nobel Prize winner, Herman Joseph Muller, who persuaded her to move to Moscow, who at this time was pretty fucking communist. That must have been some good ass dick because who's going to move to Moscow at that time? Right? Especially if you grew up in well, St. Louis where the arches are. Unless you're ar <laughs> I feel like unless you're already living in Russia at that time, you would not to want to move. Well, to, to everyone else it seems like a paradise because, you know, work, you know, the whole the idea of communism is very I appealing. I don't know about to that. base individuals. What year is this? Probably 1920s. For some reason, I thought we were like 19. in 2032, <laughs> where everyone knew that Russia's like. <laughs> no, I think we're in late. The, in the okay, late, so Regina is here in the twenty, the late, roaring 20s. late 1920s, the communist 20s, nineteen late 1920s, <laughs> early 1930s. Yeah, so okay. communism had taken had swept the nation by storm. <laughs> and this is like the Beatle mania, right? <laughs> Commie mania. So hold me, communism. So she moved. <laughs> she moved to Moscow. Help! I need some commies. Help! <laughs> Not just any <laughs> commies. <laughs> so she moved to Moscow and started studying medicine. She enrolled in the S Moscow State Medical University, where Is, she was that really a thing? Though? Where she met Hans Gerhard. Oh, Hans! Anyone named Hans is a dreamboat, I bet. Who she, she seems who, like she's surrounding herself with lots of Germans. Who she married Smart Germans. in 1933. 
Oh. Are these East Germans? No, I'm just kidding. This doesn't exist yet. <laughs> well, it's, it's I feel like decade. at this time, Germany and Russia were pretty uh, cozy with each other. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of they had an incestuous relationship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And in 1938, you want the fuck Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> you, we could double team Poland. I don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, in 1938, Hans Gerhard and Regina had a daughter, Joan Fisher. That's nice. Oh, yeah. That little, little, little baby, baby girl. Joan. Little yeah. baby Joan. Little baby Joan. With the wee baby Joan. <laughs> <laughs> but with the reemergence of anti Semitism under Stalin, <laughs> the reemergence, Regina decided to take her daughter and get the fuck out of Russia and move to France for a while. It's probably a smart move. Where in 1939, she decided to move from France because Germany was knocking on the door. Hmm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we Is li- anybody in here? <laughs> <laughs> we have some panzers. <laughs> we need somewhere to put them. <laughs> so then she finally, she finally moved to the United States in 1939. Just she should have been there the whole leaving time. Leaving Hans Gerhardt in Moscow. He never went with her to France. Oh, okay. So. So when she left so Moscow, he's not happy he w- he <laughs> <laughs> they actually <laughs> separated before she left. Oh, and then she was in France for a couple years, and then, well, for like a couple months, sorry, and then moved to <laughs> the United States. I like to think it was some dramatic argument. It's like, what should we do with Little Richard <laughs> <laughs> Fisher? <laughs> <laughs> not the <this> singer. <laughs> so Regina was, uh, you know, homeless. Regina, she's. Bouncing from job to job, trying to earn her job way. Job to job, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because she's preggers in 1942. So on March 9th, 1943, in Chicago, Illinois, Robert Fisher was born. And on the oh, birth not Chicago, Bobby. Mississippi. On the birth certificate, Bobby. Uh, Regina put Hans Gerhardt as the father <gasps> in 1943. So Bobby Gerhardt. <laughs> not having seen him in four years. That's true love. So you know when they broke up. Because he never came to the United States. How could he? Because World so, War II happened. He probably got exploded. Sa- <laughs> so what you're saying is that's not his dad. That's not his daddy. Right, right. Uh, to jump ahead a little bit, because of Regina's communist sympathies, mm. uh, J. Edgar Hoover actually had a file on her. Kympathies. Uh, and noted that, as I just said, Gerhardt never entered the United States. But a Hungarian mathematician and physicist, Paul Nehemny, no, Nehemny, no, Hungarian names, took a keen interest in uh, Fisher's upbringing. Oh, he was hung. Hungarian. Uh, interesting joke. Uh, and paid for Bobby's schooling up until he died in 1952. So, most likely he was baby daddy that's definitely one of those things like hey here's this guy that you kind of know but he just deposits about five thousand dollars in your bank account every <laughs> every couple of days <laughs> bobby do you play baseball <laughs> <laughs> do you play chess bobby <laughs> six years passed that who taught him chess 19 19- like no he never news. met him oh he never met him he never met him <laughs> no one met bobby in 1949 uh at the tender age of six bobby and his family moved to manhattan then the following year to move to Brooklyn, New York City. They moved to New York City and then they moved slightly down the street. Yeah, they down the street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they were in New York City. Brooklyn! I mean, considering <laughs> who you asked. And there you was know, no the sleep. The five boroughs are very different. <laughs> no sleep. Bobby Fisher founded the Beastie Boys. Beastie Bobby, <laughs> of course. <laughs> in 1949, uh, Bobby and his sister Joan learned chess from a box set that they bought at a candy store. Those are some good ass candy stores. You probably bought it for a dollar. I miss stores like that. It's like, yo, we're like a candy store, but yo, you want a fucking PlayStation? <laughs> like after like thousands of years, I don't even know if that's how long chess has been around, but <laughs> it started in India. God invented chess. It's in the Bible. But like, it's just been around for so long that, and it's it's great because like most through most of history, things are boring, so people have to invent things to do. So it's just like, well, let's play this game. Where we simulate war. Yeah, yeah. it's like people... And it's strategy. It's like a lot of strategy involved. Hopefully when you're just checkers where it's just like... Durr. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I can jump over you. <laughs> you know, jump, king me. And we have chess. But yeah, you guys think you're bored now. Hopefully you're out of quarantine at this point. But if you're not... 
It could be worse. You watch could be having to invent games. <laughs> watch some AIs battle each other on a chessboard. That's that's quite fascinating. It's quite fascinating. See, luckily you have the ability to do that. <laughs> and back here, in this time, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, th- these days people just don't have the attention span for chess. I, I mean, do. some people do, but like, not. It's not. You guys are all dumb. You probably turned it off already. Joan, after a couple months, lost lost interest. Lost interest in chess. And Regina, who was trying to uh, become a nurse, she wasn't around. So Bobby is just playing chess help. against himself, being very very quiet, sad kid, playing chess with himself. That is really sad. To the point where his mother wrote an ad to the Brooklyn Eagle, a, lo- <laughs> a local news uh, Eagle newspaper, asking for to find uh, children to play chess with Bobby. I'm gonna play with my kid. And you had to pay money to like, take an newspaper. ad out in the effing newspaper. Yeah, it's like classified. My kid is a loser. Will someone hang out with him? <laughs> But the eagle didn't know how to classify the ad. Because it was an eagle. (laughs) So they didn't print it? Oh, I thought they put it. You were going to say they put it in like the singles section. (laughs) Was that a section? Eight year old boy looking for another eight year old boy. (laughs) This is something we should investigate in historical. Was there like a. Like a late 40s, early 50s version of Tinder that you just did in the newspaper? Like, hi. (laughs) Single white male. (laughs) I'm the only one who can afford this, a single white male. But the eagle did pass the the note on to Herman Helms, the dean of American chess, who invited Bobby <laughs> to an exhibition with Max Pavy. How do you get that job? Yeah, a, how do you get a that Scottish job? master? Sounds like a job that you just kind of give yourself. <laughs> the dean, the dean of chess, <laughs> just like calls himself that. It's like, yeah, I have a PhD in Clue. <laughs> he's, he's running back alley games. He's like, I'm the dean, and I will be referred to as that alone. I think a dean would be more respectable. It's like I'm the, I'm like. He's got a a mob boss. He's got a yeah, I'm, school I'm, in Westminster I'm, that he teaches chess. To I'm people. Don Chess. <laughs> <laughs> Corleone Chess. Now, Bobby played the Scottish master for 15 minutes, which was pretty good for his first Not pretty match good. against a master. But how old was he? He inevitably lost. Uh, let's see. This is 1949. So, well, no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> He's six. Okay. He's six years old. In case anyone's wondering, Jason just flashed me his uh, information <laughs> <laughs> to prove that he was six. See? <laughs> not lie. He's six. But one of the spe- six, six. one of the spectators at that match was the Brooklyn Chess Club president, now owned by Jay Z. Uh, That's the Nets. One of the spectators was Brooklyn Chess Club president Carmine, simply known as Carmine. <laughs> he was like the Madonna of his time. He only had one name, Seal. He was yeah. an American chess <laughs> expert of near master strength and an instructor. Master. Near, mere, near master strength. Near master strength. Near, mere master strength. <laughs> near, mere master strength. Yeah. You near are me, but the master. Near, mere master. <laughs> you are not a god yet. You'll never be a god. Carmine. <laughs> and Carmine was uh, very impressed with Fisher's play that he introduced him to his club, the Brooklyn Chess Club, and began teaching him. Now, Let f- me bring you into the family, son. I'm going to teach you how to play chess. Come on, it's going to teach you how to play, son. All right. I will teach you, Bobby Fisher. <laughs> now, uh, Fisher had this to say of Carmine. I will play with you. <laughs> I will fly with you. <laughs> he was possibly not the best player in the world, but he was a very good teacher. Meeting him was probably a decisive factor in my going ahead with chess. So he's an important guy. And maybe he would Carmine have been. Carmine is an important guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's about his Carmine. He's important. Don't question it. So Carmine's teaching him, and then in 1955, at 12 years old, he joined the Manhattan Chess Club. They were a gang that robbed people. Was, was <laughs> Carmine still teaching him during this period, or did he just move on? He moved on. Or did he get killed by Darth Maul? So Carmine <laughs> said, "Hi, right, Bobby. You, you, I you, taught you. Never well, you know, they, they, were fr- they were friends up in no, until... We're still going to be friends. No, no, until 1952. <laughs> until 1952. When Carmine left the city. <laughs> when I leave the city. <laughs> and then we won't be friends. And we won't be friends no more. So in 1955, he joined the Manhattan Chess Club. In March 1956, he the joined MCC. the Log, Log Cabin Chess Club of New Jersey, who took him on a trip to Cuba. 
Huh. Where he played second board and tied was had the same amount of points as the the first board master on his team. So So what does second board mean? Like you're the second best there? Yes. Okay. Second board. Yeah. You get the second board. <laughs> second board all it's team. Like, it's like uh, first seat, second seat in an orchestra. Okay. Yeah. That's, how, that's how I I thought I, you were going to say seeds the... first, like in football, like something that's cool, not like chess. No, <laughs> or orchestra. I'm a classy individual. <laughs> Vote on Twitter, James. So, a classy individual. <laughs> so. We'll put that to the test. <laughs> And then in July of 1956, after he came back from Cuba, he won the Junior Chess Championship at 13 years old. Junior. And continuing on, he played in the U.S. Open Chess uh, Championship in Oklahoma City. Against Tiger Woods. Where he was in a four-way tie for fourth place. Well, he sucks. Then he went to the Canadian Open Chess Championship, the first ever. Where he was in a four-way tie for eighth. Then in November of 1956, he was in the Eastern States Open Championship in Washington, D.C., tying in a four-way tie for second. So there was a lot of, way four, four, a lot of four-way ties in chess here. A lot of four-way tie. So in 1957, after points were accrued over the previous year, he was considered a chess master. And then he defended his junior title and in August of 1957, won the U.S. Open. So it was like the opposite of Anakin Skywalker. It's like, we, oh we'll put you on this council, but we not, do not grant you the rank. Of yes, he was a U.S. Master. champion. <laughs> a U.S. champion, but also qualified as an international master. And for the next eight years, he placed first in the U.S. championship. And if it's in the U.S., that means you're like international. Now, over this time, over the next five to seven years, he, he had one goal in mind was to be world champion. So he played chess. He played chess all over the place. He came in first. He came in second. He was accruing points left and right. Then. Montage. In 19... Montage. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. In 1972, he had enough clout in the chess community to <laughs> challenge the world master. Chess club. Or the world champion. Uh, Spassky of the USSR. I'm Spassky. <laughs> I'm the chess champion. Spastic Spassky. Of the world. So their match took place in Reykjavik. Uh, good God. Reykjavik. Iceland. It took place in Iceland. <laughs> the capital of Iceland. In, from July to September of 1972. The match was the first to... Seems like an appropriate place for chess. What the fuck is happening in Iceland? Chess! Yeah. Bobby Fischer. And also... There's like whales and shit jumping out of ice. And also it's the setting for Die Another Day. I, New York, give me New York City. I'm good on Iceland. So like completely diametrically He's, opposed. This is where fucking Bobby's from. He's playing New, chess in New York City. So there's a big space laser from Die Another Day, and they're in Iceland, and they're playing chess, right? Yes. And it was the first to be uh, to receive a bro- American broadcast in primetime. <laughs> and there wasn't much to watch. You know what, guys? If you're still in quarantine, you would watch some chess right now. <laughs> so Fisher lost... The first two games, uh, <sighs> garbage ass Fisher, yeah, dude, but then sucks. started uh, bitching and moaning about the uh, press coverage. He didn't like all the flashing lights and cameras and whatnot. So him and Spassky came to an agreement that their next match would be played behind closed doors. And then after that, they came and it was more fo- a formal game and he seemed to be calming, calm down a little bit. They had a forbidding game behind other closed doors beforehand, though. Yeah, I'm sure he, they came to an agreement. <laughs> Behind those closed doors. A very climactic I'm sure they agreement. Did. An agreement was made. But all af- over his face. The secret <laughs> hand- Oh, God. No, I was going to say the secret handshake. but <laughs> Fisher won seven of the next 17, or seven of the next 19 games, losing only one, that and isn't- drawing 11. Sound- oh. And he became the 11th world chess champion. I, that isn't, that's not really cool. Like he won a few of them, but then he just tied the rest of them. Yeah, but he tied enough to where Spassky couldn't gain. Man, who wants a tie to win? So Chess sucks. They stalemated. Yeah, but uh, eleven times. Eleven times. No, he so, said he won seven out of nineteen, and he did. There was a tie like eleven times. So I'm like, that's stupid. So there's nineteen games total. Of the, it, there were twenty-one games. So he lost the first two. 
won the next what was seven. It, three out of five? No, they they I think they had uh you had to the chess s- tournaments usually like they're seeding and you have to like go through people and then you'll eventually But it was just between them. Oh well never mind, I don't remember. So I do believe <laughs> I don't you know had to unhelpful <laughs> <laughs> win a, I was thinking about myself either a certain game. amount of games or a certain amount over the your opponent. So well, I was thinking they games. played so many because he stalemated so many times that stretched it out more than it would normally go. You know what I mean? Like if you had a deciding game and then you stalemated, then obviously that doesn't that doesn't decide anything. So you have to play another game and then you stalemate again eleven freaking times. So that's what I was thinking. Like, was it like seven out of nine or something like some shit like that or like? Six, that, well, that's what it is, right? Because he won two. The other Spassky won two, two, and then he won seven. And then he lost one, so it's, it's seven to three. And then they. And then there was like twenty more. <laughs> Not twenty, obviously. And then but eleven more. So and then this oh, is unimportant. And then just eleven stalemates. Yeah. And then they just, just give up. Yeah. They're like, all right, whatever, fuck this. And then he, yeah, he. Just you win, Bobby. Conceded, yeah. Oh, he see, he was just tired world, and probably had something chess. else to do. So, is a chess this chess tournament just a war of attrition? Like, who can last the longest right? before just and, and like it lasted from July to September? <laughs> oh, okay. So this wasn't like just like a week in Iceland. See, this it, is what we're thinking here. That like there's the laser coming, as we said from the aforementioned die another day, <laughs> <laughs> coming towards them. I imagine they're like chess, 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 chess. They're just like living in this place, or they like have <laughs> one chessboard and they like keep going back home, flying back to the United States and coming back and making. Well, that's one what move, it sounds like. And then going back and shit. That's what it freaking sounds like. See, that would be cool, wouldn't it? So after he <laughs> won, he sort of faded into obscurity because he won. He didn't. Re- he proved to himself that he was a world champion, so he didn't really. Psh, Some play. people he, are like he, that. he played private games, but really didn't do any like big tournaments. It's like when Michael Jordan got his second three P, and he just went out of the public light. But I think MJ is cooler than Bobby Fisher. But he reemerged. Well, Bobby Fisher's like the Michael Jordan of basketball. You mean of of chess? chess? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I mean. But he reemerged after twenty years in Bobby isolation. Bobby Fisher's like the Michael Jordan of swimming, basketball, <laughs> <laughs> Olympic <laughs> pool swimming. <laughs> but he reemerged after twenty years. Bobby Fisher was actually six four and had a great dribble <laughs> off the ball. <laughs> Set a screen. to play Spassky again. Spassky ball in nineteen ninety two. So Spassky Fisher. Ninety two. Spassky yeah, Fisher. It oh, sounds yeah. like. It sounds like an HBO the revenge, title card. Revenge match of the century. <laughs> SBB. That sounds like an HBO boxing title card. Spassky versus Fisher. Spassky skeleton. And the right ma- next to the Cinco. <laughs> the match took place in Yugoslavia in spite of a United Nations embargo that included sanctions on commercial activities. Yeah, it said, please don't go to Yugoslavia. You can do it anywhere else <laughs> in the world. Why are you doing it in Yugoslavia? Why did they do it in Yugoslavia? It was 1992. Just I guess the Cold flout, War had just ended. Just to flout the UN. Because it's chess, and they just were like, whatever. Yeah, we'll just play chess anyway. <laughs> we, it, we Chess ascends above. Life is a game of Your chess. Your petty political, <laughs> geopolitical jargon. Squabbles. Yeah. For sure won the match with 10 wins, 5 losses, and 15 draws. So that's 30 <laughs> games. See, I don't. I don't like these. Like for sure, won the match. He won like two, but then there was like twenty draws, <laughs> and then they like lost one. Well, he lost in life because the U.S. Department <laughs> of Treasury warned Fisher before the start of the match that his participation was illegal <laughs> and would violate President George H. W. Bush's executive order to not go to Yugoslavia. Please, the Cold War just ended. <laughs> Not to mention, you have some uh, minor humanitarian issues going on in that country at the time. Some minor. Yeah, minor. just some minor. I just held up the little, like, some minor, minor genocide. Ethnic cleansing. Yeah. Some light genocide. Yeah. You can have a little ethnic cleansing as a treat. Only if you eat your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> his violation of the order led to U.S. federal officials to initiate a warrant for his arrest upon completion <laughs> of the match. And then he played chess with the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> and his first move was to Budapest, Hungary, where he shacked up. <laughs> Where he shacked up with a young Hungarian chess player named Zita. And he played <laughs> played some games. He watched some games. But Zita? Was, was getting bored with the game, so he started inventing new ways to play it. That's not how it works. Yeah. 
Like, well, there's the rules. It's like, hey, I'm, I don't know. If you learn, if guess you guess what, I'm playing something. basketball. You know what? I'm gonna just kick it. <laughs> well, I mean, basketball players innovate. They come up with new ways it's like, to guess play. Guess what? The we're game. not gonna. We're That's not, literally what we're gonna he's make traveling about. legal, Mal, so Mal, I can just hold the ball like a lineman in football. Malone and, and Stockton. Like they pioneered the sport. Like there's well, they change laws in different ways, but we can talk about the history of basketball. Time but that's started. what he's saying. He's talking about setting a pick in chess. We'll see. Because we'll see. I don't know. Sounds like he's just making up stuff. Like guess what? Now the queen can do this. No, he didn't change the way the. He just changed the the starting placement of the pieces, the back pieces. It was a randomized placement. So, like, the way chess is played now is the way he set it up? No, no, no. <clears throat> no. No. He just... he no. just so confused. He just uh, He's randomized the placing of the back uh, rank. Yeah. So the king could be anywhere in the back, and then... He, so he was just bored, and this is the way he was just playing it. Yes. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then in 2000... Are so we he, put the king right in the middle? He's... A, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he still had, you know, the first and second rank. <laughs> what you going to do now? Yeah. No, I know. I get it. Yes. In 2000 to 2002, <laughs> he lived in the Philippines. And while, <laughs> he got around. While stay, well, he was also living in Japan at the time, so he was bouncing back and forth. <laughs> while in the Philippines, he stayed with a Filipino <laughs> chess master and was introduced to a Marilyn Young, who in 2001... Founded gave, Maryland. ...gave birth <laughs> to Jinky Young and... <laughs> Was procl- uh, was proclaiming that Bobby Fischer was the father. You are not the father, <laughs> Bobby Fischer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> break dancing. <laughs> Woman runs to the crying couch in the back. <laughs> in 2004, while traveling in Japan, he was arrested for a expired passport, and then they were going to deport him. Because of the warrant for in that, from ninety two for the My Yugoslavia God. incident, and then G W Bush is president then, so, so he's probably like my daddy. So uh, he did take a few vendettas out during his Bobby <laughs> Bobby Fisher actually you, asked <laughs> Secretary of State Colin Powell to uh, negate his citizenship. He's like, just just I don't want to be an American citizen anymore. Just leave me alone. But that didn't work. So he's still going to be deported. So he started writing letters to all these places, like, take me in. He tried to... Uh, take me in. <laughs> he tried take to gain... Take me in, I'll play some jazz. <laughs> he tried to gain German citizenship based on his quote-unquote father. Yeah, Ger- that Gerhard. guy. Yeah, yeah, Gerhard. Gerhard. Yeah. That didn't really it go through. It said it on the thing. That didn't really go through. Yeah. Who was he? I'm pretty sure he died in World War II, like, five decades ago. <laughs> but Iceland came to his... Save, savior, Iceland His defense. Be- yeah, defense. Oh, Iceland. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. Yeah, here's Iceland. Who's like, yeah, they're just like, hey, you put us on the map with your 1972. Nice Hooga, Hooga, Hooga. Your 1972 <laughs> match pretty much put us on the global stage. So, uh, <laughs> Remember yeah, forty years ago, we'll take you in. <laughs> Iceland never forgets <laughs> its debts. So he moved to Iceland <laughs> and lived there until he died. Of course, he did on January seventeenth, two thousand eight. At the age of 64. From Kidley. And then he caused Kidley. the 2008 financial collapse. No, okay. <laughs> you know what? From what I've gathered from this episode is that fuck Bobby Fischer. <laughs> he was kind of an asshole. After the September 11th attacks, he, was, he stated that America deserved it because America and the Jews had treated the Palestinians so bad. Okay. So Bobby Fischer sucks. And I've been getting this whole thing in my... My heart this whole entire episode. I've been getting this thing in my heart. It's been brewing. <laughs> it's been brewing. So it's like he wasn't even so he he took all the all the good stuff and he's like, I just want to play some chess. It's going to Yugoslavia when he wasn't supposed to. We as as David said, geoplot political things are happening. The Cold War just ended. It's like oh, I'm just gonna go here. It's like, can you just go like right down the street? Like <laughs> anywhere else? No, Yugoslavia. He's thumbing his nose up at the UN. Well, what do you expect, man? And then he's like just traveling around playing chess. Also probably because he felt like there was a total Jewish conspiracy to destroy his life. Because banks. And then there's that. He like did it to himself because there's banks, you said. Because banks started uh, 
uh, liquidating his accounts. I would have, <laughs> which he blamed, which well, he blamed on the Jewish community. I mean, to be fair, there might have uh, been like five percent where someone was of, being a dick <laughs> to Bobby Fischer. <laughs> one of his uh, major uh, pieces in his book collection was Mein Kampf. Yo, this Bobby Fischer episode is taking a turn. Yo, like, Bobby. Right <laughs> he was a big. You got some issues, man. He was a big Hitler fan, and. <laughs> Is that funny? <laughs> Good God. Proclaimed his fascination with Adolf publicly up until a friend of his took him to a, war, a World War II war museum. And then he never he really... been that old at the time. Yo, Bobby! Never really spoke about it publicly again until the late 90s, early 2000s when he was only heard doing uh, radio interviews where he railed against the Jewish conspiracy. Friggin screw you, Bobby Fisher. Well, you, were it, good at, you were good at chess, and you're changing the rules, and you're trying to change the rules on how the how life works. That's not the way it works, bro. <laughs> well, not to, not to defend him, but his mother was Jewish. And in Bobby's eyes, you could possibly see it as his mother abandoned him. I don't know. He actually asked the Jewish community to take him off of so he's like he's just a self-hating yeah. Jew. That's <laughs> all it is. Yes. See that makes more it's sense. Jew Jewish See, now guilt. Now we figured it out. And, but that's just Jewish guilt. It's all like a serious <laughs> man. A serious man's about Bobby Fish. <laughs> You're a serious man, Bobby. See some of those self-hating Jews, like they have like real issues. Bobby Fisher was just an asshole. It sounds like he wasn't self-hating. Sounds like know. he loved himself. He just hated Jews <laughs> and uh, wanted to go to Yugoslavia and Iceland. When you when you say hey screw you I don't even want citizenship ship, citizenship anymore you tell them I don't even want it and they're like I like how it's like so many people are trying to get into America and it's like yo I don't want to even be American anymore like nope <laughs> we gotta charge you boy <laughs> so he ended up in Iceland one of those beautiful places on earth screw him after he died his estate was estimated to be worth about two million dollars. And it quickly became the subject of a legal battle inva uh, involving claims from four different parties. One, his wife from Japan, Miyoko Watai. The, uh, he traveled the world. Then the, al chess. the alleged Filipino daughter, Jinky. The uh, two American Jinky. nephews from his sister, Joan. And then the U.S. government, who were claiming unpaid taxes. In 2010, Jinky actually had his body exhumed in Iceland to get a DNA test. And this is where the Mari episode came in because it was negative. <laughs> ha. Uh, Miyoko ended Fuck up... Fuck you, Jinky. <laughs> Miyoko ended up winning the dispute with the nephews paying her court costs of $57,000. Damn. Yes. And that was the life of Bobby Fischer. Great chess player. Decent anti-Semite. <laughs> Better, I'd say. At Better hateful human being. He sucks at life, but not at chess. I don't know what we've learned today other than, like, I really had no the, opinion. Your, on your the people you idolize have hidden anti-Semitic yeah. well, no, tendencies. I, well, that does happen. I was about to say, I'm like, I didn't give one. Mel Gibson. Back to Mel Gibson. Well, see, at least Mel Gibson knows story structure. Hey, Mel like Gibson's Bobby, brilliant, though. Bobby, yeah, exactly. Like Bobby Fisher, <laughs> Bobby Fisher just played chess. He's brilliant. He, chess, Mel Gibson though. made the Patriot. <laughs> well, well, Bobby Fisher, uh, I want to say through the first one of the first dents in the Soviet Union armor. After hearing everything else, I will not give him that credit <laughs> because it seems like he wanted to live in the Soviet Union. Well, he hated the Soviets because of his mom. Who was a big commie. But then he hated his mom because she was Jewish. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to do the shill stuff real quick. Get this out of the way because y'all love just this part of the episode. Uh, give us five stars on iTunes, please. No, Thank please. you. Follow us on social media. You can find us at he Historic. Hey, hey, hey Historical. <laughs> There's like five H's. <laughs> historical. Uh, you can find us at Historical on Instagram and Twitter. Word of mouth advertising is the best thing that you can do for us so like yeah just tell people about us if you like it and yeah tell, uh, tell people about us if you don't like it too you know maybe they'll like it even yep. if you don't share it tell them how much you hate us or maybe we'll get a twitter rage mob after us yeah, and, that, yeah. and we'll get famous from that ACLU's coming our way because we were talking about how anti-semitic Bobby Fischer was life is full of holes enter wisely bye
Checkmate, bitches.